Hi everyone, this video is showing you some of the techniques in GeoGebra, just in case you missed them, and you can get another look at some of the things that we've done in class. I'm going to start off with talking about the measures of centrality. So the first one is the median that makes the centroid. So uh, remember the median connects the midpoint of a line segment to the opposite vertex. So I just used the midpoint tool and I connected them that way. Another tool that we can use is finding the circumcenter that uses the perpendicular bisector tool. And that will give you the circumcenter. Similarly, the angle bisector tool uh, asks you to select three points or two lines. I'm going to select three points. So these angle bisectors are going to intersect at the in center. And then the last one is the, um, <clears throat> uh, sorry, the last one is the uh, altitude. And so those are perpendicular lines that line up with the opposite vertex. So you just select the line that you want to make it parallel to and then the point, line and point, and that'll give you the ortho center. Um, another thing that I wanted to show you was how to do some isometry. So that was things like translate, reflection, rotation, and glide reflection. I'll start off with a translation. Let's say that you are told that you want to use um, this point and you want to give it a translation from B to C. Um, in that case, you would just use under translate, or sorry, under transform down here, you use translate by vector, uh, select the point, and then make sure you're paying attention to the order of those letters. Um, in this case, let's say I want to use the transform from B to C. That's my glide arrow. That'll give me A prime over here. For a reflection, um, you're going to be given a line of reflection. So just make that using the line tool. And you're going to take this reflect about a line tool. So that's going to be A. And I'm going to reflect it along this line here. Uh, so select the point first and then the line in that case. That'll give you the reflection over here. Um, a glide reflection is going to be both of those things, um, but usually the information that you're given is going to look something like this. So you've got a point, you've got a glide arrow, let's say it's BC, and then the information that it gives you is not the line of reflection that you're going to be using, but instead it'll say uh, the line of reflection passes through this point D. So um, we can do the translation first. Let's go ahead and do that first. So we're translating this point A and we're going to use this B to C. That's going to give us A prime. And then we need to reflect it. And this line of reflection on here, um, it needs to be parallel to our glide vector. So in glide reflections, the line of reflection is always going to be parallel to this glide arrow. So what I'm going to do is take this uh, parallel line tool. There we go. And it says select a parallel line. I want it parallel to my glide arrow. And I want it to go through this point. And that'll give me this line of reflection. So this parallel line is my line of reflection. And then I can use this A prime and reflect it down to here. Okay, so that was glide reflection. Um, next up is rotation. And generally you're given a point that you want to rotate and then you are given the rotation arrow. Let's say it's BCD is what you want. So BCD um, is telling us that we want to rotate this point about the point C. So C is going to be our central axis of rotation. And then 
it's going to start at B and move down to D. So B, C, D in that order is going to give you a rotation arrow that is uh, clockwise in this much. Now, if you try to use the rotate around a point, it's going to ask you what you want to rotate. So I want to rotate A around my center point here. And then it brings up a menu that will ask you uh, how much you want to rotate it by and whether you want to do it clockwise or counterclockwise. Now, um, you can't just click on the uh, vertices here to rotate it. So what you're going to have to do instead is figure out what this angle of rotation is or how much of a rotation that is. And so I'm going to use that angle measure tool. And so this is telling me that it's one, um, one more time. I'm going to see if I can select these three points. And that gives me a, looks like 104 degrees. Sorry, I'm just going to move this out of the way. This might be a little difficult to see. So I'm going to go under settings and the name and value that's looking a little better okay so 51.4 degrees that's my angle there okay so it's 51.4 degrees and if my rotation arrow is b c d in that order i'm going to be moving in a uh, clockwise direction right starting at b and moving over to d Okay, so 51.4 degrees. Now I've got all the information that I need to do my rotation. So that's going to use rotation around a point. This is what I want to rotate. This is my center. And then it's 51.4 degrees. And that is going to be in the clockwise direction. Okay, and sure enough, it rotated it around that point. 51.4 degrees. That's all the isometries. Um, the last thing I wanted to show you was this concept of lines of reflection. So I'm going to draw a triangle here, uh, ABC. And if you want to show that this triangle is congruent to some other triangle, um, you can use lines of reflection um, to show that those two triangles overlap. Now, um, let's say that I took this object and I reflected it about a line, and I guess I'll need to create that line first to reflect it. <clears throat> so here's a line of reflection, and I want to reflect about a line, so I'm going to select this triangle and reflect it on the line. Um, that Although it might seem obvious, that took one line of reflection to show that this triangle here is congruent to this triangle over here. I just had to reflect it once. Now, um, that was for a reflection. It took one line. Um, if I want to instead uh, show a translation, right? so let's say I want to show that these two triangles are congruent to each other, um, I can start off by reflecting A. So I'm going to make a perpendicular bisector between these two A points, and I'll show the line segment on there. Uh, so I'm going to reflect this object first along the points connecting A to A. Reflect the triangle along A. And then one more line of reflection. I'm going to use these points C here. You could use B as well. Um, but I'm going to make a perpendicular bisector that cuts C right in half. So I'm just connecting points from, uh, whoops, I'm just connecting points from uh, my starting triangle to the corresponding um, point on the other angle. But if I take this uh, triangle here that I made and I reflect it 
along this line. Oops. If I reflect it along this line, um, you're not able to see it, but I did get, um, in fact, this same triangle back. Oops. Let me try that one more time. Um, <clears throat> if I reflect this triangle along this line, I get that same triangle back over here. So long story short, what I've done here is shown that you can um, recreate a translation by reflecting two times. So reflection takes one line of reflection. Um, a transform takes two lines of reflection. Um, I'm going to keep going through the isometries. Let's say I take this, I copy it, put it over here, and this time I'm going to rotate it. rotate this object here and let's say I rotate it uh, that's fine 45 degrees counterclockwise okay so um, it looks like um, ABC is congruent to this uh, DEF on here oh what's going on here Uh, let's try that one more time. Okay, so that is this. And let's see if I can rotate it. I'm just going to try rotating it um, about a point, and I'll just sort of leave it there. So it's being rotated around there. Um, but point being that this um, A lines up with E, B lines up with F, and C lines up with G there. OK, so if I want to show that this and this are congruent, um, that's going to take perpendicular bisector here. Here is one line of reflection. So we'll go ahead and reflect. Oops. Reflect this about this line here. And then I'll do the same thing, make a perpendicular bisector from here to here. And then I'll reflect this object. Uh, looks like I'm reflecting this one about this line. OK, so that did, in fact, give me the same triangle back or a congruent triangle back. So um, rotations take two lines of reflection. So reflections take one, rotations take two, and translations take two. Um, the last one is a glide reflection. So I'll go ahead and do a glide reflection on this object. Let's say that I've got, um, this is my uh, reflection, line of reflection over here. My glide air will be DE. So I'm going to do those in order. <clears throat> First, I'm going to translate this object from D to E. And then I'm going to take this and reflect it about a line. So I'm taking this and reflecting it about a line. OK, so this is my glide reflection over here. Um, 
I'm going to connect A to A with a perpendicular bisector. So this is my first line of reflection. So I'm going to reflect this about this line here. And then I need to connect B to B with a perpendicular bisector. Repeat that process. Um, this one across this line here. And then the last one I need to connect uh, C to C. And you can uh, maybe see it here, what I'm trying to create here. But um, yeah, from C to C, <clears throat> I'm going to make a perpendicular bisector. And when I take that object and reflect it, I'll have to be careful here. So this object along this line there. Mm. <clears throat> Sorry, I think I got one too many um, pieces on here. But point being, if you... <laughs> Sorry, I got a little uh, too much on here. But if you work to um, reflect that one more time... <clears throat> Oh, I think it's it's I and C, so I'm going to try that before I uh, end this video. So I and C, yep, that's definitely the one. Okay, so this object reflected about this line, and I do in fact get that glide reflection triangle back. So um, <laughs> maybe a little messy to look at in its current state, but I am using one, two, three lines of reflection in order to uh, prove the congruence of a glide reflection. So in summary, reflections take one line of reflection, rotations and translations take two lines of reflection, and then a glide reflection would take three lines of reflection. Um, that's all I've got, so I think that'll be everything you need for quizzes four and five.